Well, they refused to work with one another, so with 48 seats apiece, the DA and ANC have no choice but to hear what Trebeche's smaller elected parties have to say, because they may effectively decide who will govern Trebeche. One man who has a lot of experience with coalitions in the Nelson Mandela Bay district is none other than former mayor Athol Trollope. He reckons the hung council in Trebeche is bad news for the voters. Well, Mr. Trollope joins us live now. Athol, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, what was your experience of uh, these local government elections uh, from where you were sitting? Hi, Annika. Uh, for the first time, uh, I experienced, elect for the first time in 30 years, I expected, experienced elections as a normal voter. Uh, and I must say, uh, I've been quite uh, bemused by what has happened because uh, we now have a situation in our country where there are, I think, over 60 mm -hmm. municipalities that don't have any outright majority, so they're effectively hung councils. And what has happened in Nelson Mandela Bay is an ex especially tricky situation because the two biggest parties aren't anywhere near um, making a co an easy coalition. So the options that lie ahead are very, very difficult in Nelson Mandela Bay. Athol, another coalition for the Bay... Uh in your opinion, I mean, you were in the thick of it the last time. Did it work? Look, it did work, actually. For two years, we did incredibly well. We achieved some very important milestones, got recognition from Treasury, and you could see a marked difference in the city. It wasn't easy, and uh, in, back in 2016, we only had a coalition with three other parties. Uh, we've learned some lessons uh, with, in that regard. I think the whole country has learned lessons that when you pick coalition partners, you've got to find something that is uh, of, of something of a common thread that keeps you united and that you have critical mass. And uh, it's going to be very difficult in this scenario because in 2016, it was difficult enough keeping the coalition together with one fractious member, which was Mr. Mongameli Bobani from the UDM, and one of the other lessons we've learned is that whatever the negotiations are and whatever the final contract or agreement is with coalitions, I believe it should be published uh, so that the public know and the voters that have voted for the respective parties in that coalition understand what the rules of engagement are. We had a coalition agreement that uh, the UDM representative just broke every single one of those rules without any consequence, and ultimately that led to the dissolution of our coalition. This time round, whoever the, the two biggest parties have got around 40% each, so they represent 80% of those people who did vote, uh, it's going to be difficult. The DA has said publicly that it won't work with the EFF and now latterly even the ANC, so that basically rules out a coalition for the DA because there aren't enough smaller parties to put a coalition together. The ANC has an option of working with the EFF and um, you know, a large number of those smaller parties. And the other option that was available was a, a scenario of a grand coalition where you could have the two biggest parties saying, we will cooperate, we represent 80% of the voters, we're going to cooperate, we're going to put people first, we're not going to put our own egos and our own political parties first. And then, obviously, you create rules of engagement, and one of those would clearly have to be uh, an issuing of, polit uh, of corruption. And uh, anyone found uh, guilty or implicated in corruption can clearly not be part of a coalition. And if they are uh, guilty of, coalition during, uh, of corruption during the coalition period, they'd have to be replaced. And the only way you can really make political parties stick to those agreements is if the agreement is public, and when that infraction occurs, that the public are informed that this person from this party has done X, therefore they are in, in contradiction of our agreements and they must either fix the situation or replace the person responsible or even the political party be ejected out of that coalition. But it's going to be a very difficult time in Nelson Mandela Bay because you might have a minority government, but you will certainly have a very unstable coalition because... My experience is that the smallest parties negotiate the biggest concessions. And uh, if, you, if you go into a coalition with, you know, seven, eight or nine or ten parties, uh, you, there aren't even enough exco seats to go around for all those parties. So who will be on the exco? Who won't be on the exco? Who will feel left out? And my experience is that the smallest parties want positions. They want mayoral positions and deputy mayoral positions. And uh, I've never seen a successful organization that's led by its tail. 
and the same applies to coalitions. I believe the majority or the biggest party in the coalition should take the leadership role, but small parties don't like that. They say they have equal status, which is true in a sense, but you know, even like a, 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 a law firm. In a law firm, you have partners, you have senior and junior partners. The junior partners don't lead the law firm, the senior parties lead that firm, and the same should apply in politics, but it's not that easy. Uh, Athol, just one last question, and uh, it has to be short, I'm afraid, but what is this horse trading period like uh, behind the scenes? It's something that uh, we as the public don't uh, get to see. Uh, what is the atmosphere like? How hard are the negotiations? They're exceptionally hard if you take the attitude that my enemy's enemy must be my friend. That's the first mistake that we made in 2016. Secondly, uh, you know, this morning, Gayton McKenzie said he would cut a deal with the AWB if they could get what they wanted out of that deal. That's the real shortfall of coalitions. It shouldn't be about parties or individuals getting what they want out. It should be about getting the job done at local government level. So the negotiations are very, very tenuous, and people negotiate out of self-interest, which is one of the greatest uh, curses in government in South Africa at the moment. It shouldn't be about a party or an individual's interest. It should be about voters' interests, and that clearly is why voters are so turned off and why the majority of the people that are registered didn't go and vote. They are sick and tired of politics. They dislike politicians. They dislike the way the political parties operate, and they dislike the big egos that are found in the big parties. It's time for the ordinary man, so to speak, and that was the DA's former mayor in Quebec, Athol Trollope. Thank you for your time this morning.